Hi everyone, welcome back to Nova Flowers. I'm Phaedra and with my husband Moroni and our kids, we have a flower farm in Australia, in Northeast Victoria. And we also run a florist business, so we sell our flowers at retail. Today, I wanna to talk to you about something very important and it's something that I think a lot of flower growers struggle with, especially in the first couple of years when they first are getting going. And that is how to price your flowers. We are going to focus on wholesale pricing in this video because you're going to need the whole need to know the wholesale price to figure out your retail price. So let's get into it. Let's start with three reasons why you're going to want to know the wholesale price of flowers in your area. Number one, you want to be paid fairly for what you're doing. It is hard work growing flowers and I'm guessing if you've sat down to watch this video, you are keen to know how to figure out the pricing so that you can be fairly paid. Um, a lot of us are doing this, not, because, not, even, not even just because we love flowers and we love the idea of this lifestyle. We wanna be self-sufficient in our income. We wanna have some control over our lives. We also actually need to make some money. So <laughs> you wanna be fairly paid. You need to know your prices for that reason. Uh, the second reason is you want to have some confidence in what you're telling others when they ask how much does this cost. You want to have your list ready to go so that you know what you can tell them with confidence. And number three is so you're not undercutting other people in your area or in your industry. So we're here today, we're going to work out your pricing. By the end of this video, you'll have a step-by-step -step guide of how to go about figuring out the pricing for you and it will differ for everybody. So I did look into giving you kind of a broad idea of how much, you know, like, these are all things I bought at the wholesaler this morning, you know, of what mini gerberas might cost or carnations and giving you an idea of what they are in different areas, just so you could get a sense of how vastly different the prices change from area to area and also how much they change depending on the season. But I think it's much more valuable if we spend our time here today talking about how you can figure out those prices and um, because it is going to be very kind of specific to your business and your area. But let's get on to step one and that is what is your goal? Which it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> Whatever your goal is, we, we still need to know what the wholesale price of flowers are. So we can talk about goals in another video, but Today, we're figuring out wholesale pricing, which you will need if you're going to be selling retail as well. So let's just get straight into it with step number two. Step number two is market research. I sat down when I first needed to figure out pricing and I went through every single flower seller in our sort of like, I reckon a hundred kilometer radius to figure out sort of where we sat, what's the climate like in terms of pricing in the area, sort of getting a rough idea of where we might fit in with that and where we wanted to fit in with it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to link a copy of a blank spreadsheet for you to download and you can do this yourself at home. So you want to find any retailer or any wholesaler anywhere that sells flowers, even at the market anything you know about. So you want to search through Google and you can just do that by typing in um, florist and your town. If you're surrounded by towns, florist and all the towns that you want to research. And usually if, I mean, if they're listed on Google, it will come up. So that's probably the easiest way to capture the first round of flower sellers being whole, um, florists. There are some gift shops that might pop up as well that sell flowers and gift shops are also a, another place or it might be like a, um, like a, what do they call them? Co-ops or anything that sells fresh flowers. You want to try to find out as much information about that outlet as possible and add it into your spreadsheet. And once you've finished with Google, you can go onto social media and start searching. So the quickest way to find that is do a hashtag and florist and your area. Most florists have already figured out that you need to hashtag, like for me, I live at Yakandanda. I always hashtag florist Yakandanda, florist Albury, florist Wodonga. And it's bringing me up in searches when people are looking for a florist. So you want to do that when you try to find others 
And you can also look up flower farms. Anyone you know who has flowers, selling flowers, look them up, fill out as much information you can on that spreadsheet to get a really good idea of where you sit on there or where you want to sit on there. Another little trick to locate florists who may not be on Google, may not be too easy to find on social media, is to look for other vendors who have something to do with the florist industry. So it might be wedding photographers, it might be uh, venues, it could be cake decorators, um, it could be um, event planners. Find those people in your area, go to their social media, click on pictures and see who have they tagged and you'll slowly come up with another list of uh, flower sellers that are, they may or may not be in your area, but if that uh, venue or um, photographer or whoever is in your area, they're using that person and they've been able to get those flowers. So that's another way to find who is around. You can also take it to the next level if you want to and go and visit some of these places. Not to be there as a creepy stalker, to be there as a customer. Like go in there, browse their store, have a chat to them. You could even mention, oh, we've started a flower farm and you know, I'm just um, getting a feel for who sells flowers and who we might be able to build a relationship with. Just do it in a way that's kind and respectful and you will start building a community around yourself by doing that. Step number three, and this is the scary step, or it was for us. This is the step where you need to find out who your wholesalers are and go and set up an account with them. Um, some wholesalers have rules about who they will and they won't allow as customers. It doesn't hurt to ask. Just see, you, ideally for this process, you really do need to find at least one or someone who will ship flowers to you so that you can get a feel for how much wholesale flowers are costing. Why do we want to go to a wholesaler? There is a really big list of perks. The main ones being when you go into your wholesaler, you are going to learn the wholesale prices especially if you're kind of a regular customer, at least once a month going in there, you're gonna get a really good grasp on what is available at what time of year, which is gonna save you time figuring that out of what's gonna grow on your farm. That's if your wholesaler is like ours, ours is very seasonal, so you need to check that as well. Um, and you're also saving a lot of time trialing flowers. We have found it so valuable to go into the wholesaler and buy flowers that we're thinking about growing on the farm and we'll use them, we'll buy them, you know, like a few times in a row. It might be, we might use them for a whole month to check what, if we like them. We're checking bars life, we're checking how they handle. As you know, we sell roadside. So those bouquets that go out roadside, they need to be a little bit more robust. And there's just some flowers we really avoid putting in roadside flowers, like snapdragons, because they just snap. It's something bumps that tip of that bloom it just snaps off and something I found was the wholesale snapdragons were more snappy than our grown snapdragons and I have no idea why I don't know if it's a variety difference or what it is but I will very very rarely buy snapdragons from a wholesaler uh, you're going to see what other florists or what the florists are used to what availability of flowers they're used to being able to get, what they're used to paying, what the condition of them is, um, how much of something they can get their hands on, how easy it is to order it in. There's some flowers that just don't ship well because the florists know they don't have a long vase life and if they don't have a use for it, they may not be going to buy that. Um, sweet peas was one for me. I ended up allergic to them. <laughs> so for me, I can't really grow them now. Well, we could grow them, but I can't really handle them. Um, I'd have to have somebody else handling them. It was a too hard basket. And then I saw them in at the wholesaler. They, I can't remember the price of them. I mean, it didn't stand out as something exorbitant, but they've got such a sh short vase life. And I went back the next week and they're all kind of like looking very sad <laughs> in the bucket. So people didn't buy them. And at that point you wouldn't buy them. 
So you're gonna learn that really valuable information, you know, like you've got your eyes to take note when you go into these places to see what's going on. And you're gonna get a really, really, really good feel for the wholesale market in your area. Okay, another point is, and it sort of carries on from, from the previous one. When you go into your wholesaler, you see what's available. Uh, number one, you're gonna see stuff that you never imagined florists would buy. I go in there and I go into the foliage fridge and I'm like, I have this stuff growing everywhere. I had no idea that people were using that in bouquets and arrangements. Like things that are considered weeds in some places. And for me, it's a huge comfort to know this is something that the florists are using and they've been using for a long time. The wholesaler buys it in. I'm good to go on this. Like I can use this thing in my arrangements now too. The other thing that you will notice when you go to your wholesaler is what isn't in there. And you might have something growing in your garden that you never seen at the wholesaler and you are on fire if that happens because you've now got a product that the florists can really only get if they get it from you. Or you might go in there and see what don't they grow in here? What can I grow at home that's gonna set me apart? Um, and in that case, you're going to have to figure out pricing based on something else and also factor in the fact, factor in the fact, factor in the aspect that it is a rare product. So you might be able to charge a little bit more to be able to offer that. For us, probably the biggest thing that has come from going to a wholesaler was it's taken so much stress out of our farming. We... If I get an order, like I'm taking on weddings, I can, I do say to the brides, you know, this is seasonal. Most of what I can get is seasonal at the wholesaler as well. I do sort of deter brides who have this very, very specific idea of what they want because I don't want the stress of having to chase that bloom up. I am in with a couple of wholesalers in Melbourne. I could get stuff shipped up, but this is our business. I don't really want to be doing things in our business where I've got the control to say, no, I, that's, that's not something we do. I'm really sorry, let me recommend somebody who might be able to help. But for us, it's taken a lot of pressure out of floral design and orders because especially if you're counting on something to be blooming in time for a big event or whatever, and it doesn't happen in time, you can order it from the wholesaler. It's, for me, it's actually been amazing. And then we don't stop, we run our florist business all year, all winter. And we have only got foliage growing on the farm right now. And I buy what I want at the wholesaler. And it is a bit of a lucky dip. Like there wasn't a lot of choice there today. It's the dead of winter. There's not a lot growing really at the moment anyway. And it is kind of pricey. So for us, that has been one of the biggest assets of being linked into the wholesaler. So step four, a couple of other little things to consider when figuring out your wholesale pricing. In your country or your area or your state, there is probably some sort of um, standardized publication that has the list of wholesale prices. Ours is called The Land. It's a newspaper. It's actually from New South Wales. It's a different state. It's not completely applicable to us right here. The prices listed in the land newspaper, uh, they will have a range. Like it might have carnations. Where are they? Here. I don't know if you can see that. It may say carnations, a bunch of, you know, like five stems of carnation spray may range from, I don't know, $6 to $10. Whereas for us, it's going to be $12 because we are inland. It has to ship further to us. And also I think a part of it is we have one wholesaler for this whole area. They can basically charge what they want and we're going to pay it. So, well, at some point we're not going to pay it, but they've got their, um, they've got their pricing very fine tuned to cover their butts and at a, a price point where we will buy it. And then once we mark up those prices, the public are going to buy it. So it's a very well oiled machine. So you can find those publications. There's some flower groups that are talking about releasing flower pricing. I do hope that it continues to stay specific to locations. 
I think it would be very hard for our wholesaler to survive here if they were only charging city prices. Um, as an example, I can go to the wholesaler in town, it's 30 minutes from home, buy, buy my flowers and come home. I can buy the exact same stuff from Melbourne probably and then sh get it shipped to me and probably pay the exact same price um, once I've paid for the shipping. But I like going into my local wholesaler and I like, you know, like having a sniff around and seeing what, what I can buy. See what's around, ask around about any publications. It's more information you can add into your spreadsheet and work out pricing. Um, another point to remember is prices fluctuate. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. The time of year, the cost of transport, the growing costs. Um, if a whole big crop, like in Australia at the moment, let's use lettuce for an example. There was a whole heap of crop failures with lettuce. Um, I think it was in Queensland. We had massive floods. Um, the petrol prices went up ridiculous. So a lettuce that used to cost us like $3, $3.50 was now $15. Same thing happens with flowers. Something can go crashing down and all of a sudden the price of flowers just shoots up. So you do need to follow that a little bit. And regardless of if you're selling wholesale, selling by the bucket, selling you pick, selling as a florist, you need to kind of keep on top of what prices are doing. And it really helps too, if you've got some kind of network, if you've got some uh, flower friends, you know, some people from other farms, you're friends with some florists, um, wholesalers, just, you know, create, try and create a community. For me, it's been easier to have that community <laughs> not in my local area. I think, I'm not sure, but I feel like the florists don't want to be my friend. <laughs> Maybe they see me as a threat and I'm not trying to compete with them. We're just doing our thing. They're doing theirs. But, you know, people perceive things differently. Um, so there's groups on Facebook. You might be able to find a mentor. There are really nice florists out there who would happily mentor you. So just, you've got to put it out there. You've got to ask around. What I, Finally, what I want to say before I talk a bit more about the wholesale pricing is I do think pricing has a bit to do with your gut feeling about it so you're going to gather all this information you're going to do your big spreadsheet of everyone who sells flowers go and join up with a wholesaler get some wholesale prices work with the flowers figure out how your product compares to their product and work out pricing that way um, you know you've got to consider the, the UPIC farms it's it could be what you're doing it might be something totally different to what you're doing and it doesn't matter you get all this information, talking to people, going into florists and purchasing a bouquet and, you know, seeing, oh, this is how they've done that, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, I always have in mind, this is the price. And then I might have a gut feeling I need to do something different with that. And I will just go with my gut. Um, and it's never not anything ridiculous, but sometimes you just think, I just don't feel like I can confidently charge that much and push my product in the same way that I could if I just dropped a little bit off it and I'd feel so much more confident pushing this out and encouraging people to buy what I'm selling. And things come in time, like I don't wanna be the cheapest florist, but we can't be the most expensive either. But that's something that in years to come we'll be able to work up to. So think of that as well, like don't be so hard on yourself. You're gonna get so many opinions from people um, but ultimately, it's your business, it's what you feel comfortable with doing, and you've really got to go with that in the end. So in saying that, we're going to go step five, working out your wholesale pricing. You've got all this information now. Um, what you need to now do is write a list of every flower that you grow, everything. And you can put it in seasons of what you grow, or you might just put an alphabetical order, you might do a spreadsheet, whatever. Just make yourself a list. It might just be written on paper. Write yourself a list of every single flower and then you can have a couple of columns like what the wholesale prices are. You might have a column that says, you know, is yours on par with that? Is it not quite up to scratch? Is it better? And then you figure out your price. And the value in having that price list of your own for your farm, when someone asks you how much something costs straight away, you are saying to them, this is the cost. Or you might say, I have a price list 
what's your email address? Let me email that through and you send it off to them. It shows so much confidence in you as a business owner and a grower when you know your prices. So that's the goal. We need that price list of wholesale flowers. So then the magic happens. You've got your wholesale list of what things cost, keeping in mind some, you know, like the, what are these called again? <laughs> Mini gerbers. They come in a pack of 10 stems, whereas, excuse me, something like um, Chris Edmonds comes in a pack of five stems. You might want to specify that on your list as well, or you might want to just say, look, I'm just going to price everything out at per stem cost. Um, whatever works for you, it's your business, you do what you want to do. You don't have to do it the way that everybody else does it. So you've got your list and this is then what informs you for your retail pricing. So you might be, you might just want to be able to pack wholesale orders, get them out to the florist and that's it, your day's done. But if you're wanting to sell bouquets, you then use that price for the wholesale cost and the simplest kind of starting point markup is times it by three. That's now your, your retail price for that stem. So, and over here, that's what most florists will do. And then add a little bit extra on for your wrapping. And we have a buffer. We have a $5 buffer on every bouquet. So if we want to offer someone a discount, hopefully our customers aren't all watching this. They're all going to ask for a discount now. <laughs> so... A five dollar we we can do we've got a five dollar buffer which at the moment we're actually using to put a couple of extra flowers in little, little things because the price of flowers is so high right now flowers are so high right now we can't we feel like we can't um, put out a bouquet that looks like it has not much in it so we just we're using up that five dollar buffer so get your prices get you then you put your retail price in a column and that's your price and stick with it. If you've got to this point where that's what you need to be earning to make a living, this is your bottom line. If somebody doesn't like that, there's plenty of other people they can go to. It's fine. You don't have to say yes to every single thing. I have another video. It's from, I can't remember, last year, the year before. I will link it in the description. It's about how to price your flowers for retail. And it goes into more detail about this you know, marking things up by three times and I make some bouquets and I show you what they look like. For example, a $35 bouquet of ours has $10 worth of wholesale flowers in it. That's it. And then you mark it up by three, so it's now $30, add the $5 buffer, $35, and that's the price that we take out roadside. You can only get the $35 bouquet roadside. You can't order that online and I don't deliver them because <laughs> there's not a lot of money. So that's how we do that one. But head over to that video, have a look at that. Um, if you've got some ideas for me to make a part two, that you've got more questions, leave them in the comments and I can work on that in a couple of months time. Otherwise, good luck. I know that this takes time and effort, but you do it once and it is done. You then just tweak numbers as they change. That's it. It makes life so much easier and I wish you all the best. I hope that this is helpful and I will see you next week. Hello guys, welcome back to Malia Bersonite's Now with Flowers. So I think it's some flowers. Can you look at the finger over there? Make it look good, okay? Subscribe!